Hey everybody, welcome back. Now that the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. is over, I want to um, get back to work on my old Jeep. And while the dashboard is out, I want to do the things about, you know, what, what's easy to do while the dashboard is out that has been bugging me or I think might fail in the next few years of however long I live and want to still drive this Jeep. But um, I've got some parts coming. The, I'm going to pull the entire blower box out, replace the blower motor. I want to make sure all the doors work right. The heater core is in there. I want to make sure that gets replaced in case, because I taking that thing out while the dashboard is in is no fun. I've done it before. But right now, I want to deal with the speedometer. Because for a, what is the thing, 1980 to 2020, a 41, 2021, a 41-year-old speedometer, it really is in pretty decent condition. This Everything works in it, so I'm just going to clean it up, get all the dust and dirt out of it as best I can. That actually is glass on the front of there, so I want to clean that up really good and polish it up so it looks nice before I put it back together. And then this, and you can see the, um, the temperature and the fuel gauge. You can see the discoloration. Whoops. You can see the discoloration on them where the lights, the sun shine through the, the openings in the gauge face. But nonetheless, they work okay, and I'm not trying to make this thing look new. I just want to make it look like it's been reasonably well cared for, which it hasn't been, but I want to try and make it look like that. Now, these standoffs up here, these are for, these are the turn signals. This is parking brake and four-wheel drive, and this is high beam. And then these three things are just for the gauge lighting. And as you can see, one of my problem is the gauge lighting wasn't really even. And I think what happened is some dumbass, and it's hard to find anybody to blame but me since I have owned this thing, I mean, 30 years. Um, the original bulbs were these little round glass incandescent bulbs, and apparently one blew out and I couldn't find them. I honestly can't remember. And I replaced it with one of these. And the glass portion gets pretty hot on these, especially up near the tip. And you can see it melted that, um, that little plastic diffuser. So what I want to do is I want to try and print replacements for these. I've got a bag of LED bulbs, so I don't think I'm ever going to have the problem with it melting anything again. And since this is encapsulated and put behind the dash, I'm not too concerned about any kind of heat or UV getting on it. That just isn't going to happen. So I don't have any translucent blue or green filament or resin, but I do have clear transparent resin in for both the FDM printer and for the resin printer, and I should be able to come up with some kind of decent replacement. For these, there's only one rivet holding them in, so I'm just going to drill this one out, and I'm going to design a replacement, and let's, um, let's try it in both resin and filament, and let's see, um, let's see what we get that we like the best. I'm going to drill this out, and I'll be right back. Okay, those were shockingly easy to get out. I bet the drill bit didn't even make more than two or three revolutions before it, um, the rivet popped loose. So anyway, here they are. You can see the problem. I, can you see the problem in this one? How burnt it is on the end compared to this one? That is, I think, my lighting issue on the speedometer. So I'm just going to make all three of these. Let's go into Fusion 360. And um, oh, I'll even use my new little rivet pop rivet gun. I think I will anyway. I may have to pull one of these gauges out. Nah, I'll go in from the other side to, um, to hold them back in. Anyway, and I hope, I hope it doesn't break it. The, um, I hope that pop rivet gun doesn't squeeze things so tight that it breaks my part is what I'm trying to say. But you know what? I got a 3D printer. If I have to make a dozen of them to get one just right, I will. Be right back. Okay, so here's the part that I sketched out in Fusion 360, and it was just really, really simple to do. As always, I came in to modify and change parameters, and I took some measurements and put the parameters in that I used. And to be honest with you, I eyeballed some of this when I didn't like the way it looked from, from the parameter. Not too much of it, but um, let's go over it real quick. And I'm not even sure why it needs to be domed on it. I think it could be flat on the bottom, but we'll talk about that more in a bit. 
So if I, and you can see it took very few steps, so it's only going to take a half a minute or so to walk through it. My original sketch was just a round circle. Then I extruded it up to a cylinder. Then I used a shell command to hollow it out. And um, then I put in a couple of fillets inside and out to, um, to give it that dome shape. And then I drew another sketch on the top surface up here. Let me click it, the top surface up here. And in that sketch, let me edit it real quick and show it to you. In that sketch, I just sketched out that little tit. And this little tit that sticks up, and if I'm offending any of you by calling it a tit, sorry about that. Not really sorry, but anyway, all it does is keep the part from pivoting or rotating on the mounting hole where the rivet goes in. Jeeps get a, have, vibrate a lot, and they get a lot of pounding, and they didn't want that pivoting to bring the plastic into contact with the, the bulb which is probably why they rounded the whole thing, was to keep the plastic an equal distance away from the bulb. But anyway, I drew that little tit up. I drew the little handle here. And then I did some extrusions from there. And I extruded those parts. Let me get hold of that again. And there's the extrusion for the tit. There's the extrusion for the handle. Or for the, the handle. I keep thinking it looks like a... A cup and then um, the fillet to round that out a little bit and make it pretty but as I got to thinking about this down here I thought you know that's going to add some support printing on both the resin and the FDM printer so does it really need to be there and I thought it didn't so I made another one where all I did was remove these two original these two um, fillets and then I came out with that. So I, you know what, I, I think I'm going to print one of each and stick a bulb in them and see what they look like. Because this would certainly be simpler to print. I would only need support underneath the mounting tab. And if I wanted to do away with a little tit, I could I could print it upside down. No, I'd still need support. I might, I might get away without support on the rounded one. But I want this there. So I'm going to print one of each of these and see what we get. Okay, so I've got some prints here to take a look at. A couple off the MDM, excuse me, FDM printer and, and one off, a couple off the resin printer. And I've also got the power supply here turned on and a little LED bulb lit up. So for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to see how hot it was going to get. And you can see, hope you can see I have it set at 13.4 volts. And it's probably been sitting here for 15, 20 minutes running while I got everything together and made a couple bloopers that I cut out. And um, it's barely warm to the touch. I mean, it would get warmer than that sitting out in the sun for, for 10 minutes. So um, I'm very happy with that. Here's the original blue one. And um, I know with the light on, it's probably going to be hard to see what it looks like. But after I show them all to you, we'll try them under the light again. So let's take a look at the two that came off the FDM printer. This came off an Ender 3. This is transparent PETG. And um, it turned out really good. I mean, this turned out well enough that I don't really think the flat bottom one is necessary. It was an easy print with only a li very little bit of... Um, of infill. Let's take a look and see how they fit. Now this is a version one product. I have not um I have not adjusted it. This is the first one that came off and I've already tested it and um let me get it the little tit in its little slot and as you can see can you see it fits perfectly. I mean I am shocked the little the little can you see the little slot for the 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 tit down here that slides in and the hole lines up. It is absolutely perfect. So I'm thrilled about that. I didn't like that. I wasn't looking forward to the idea of printing 25 or 30 of these to get one that, that fits. Now, you might think, since I have the original part, that it would be easy to get one that would print and fit. And sometimes you're right, but sometimes it's very, even with something with only five or six steps, Sometimes it's easy to overlook the obvious. Sometimes shrinkage you get, will get to you. Sometimes previous settings will get to you. Anyway, I got one that I know will work. Let's take a look at the ones off the resin printer. And these were the first two I did off the resin printer. And they came out pretty good. One thing about the resin printer is, especially with the transparent filament, it requires very careful print handling once it's done. Once it's done and you're ready to take it off the plate, 
In order to try and keep it as transparent as possible, you have to be very, very careful how you handle it. And um, it's material handling, I'm going to tell you right now, is not one of my strong points in life. I am... Um, if you, if you touch it before you get it hardened, you'll get fingerprints on it. If you brush it off, you'll take away the transparency. I have gotten transparent prints, little figurines and shit. So transparent, you'd think it was a piece of molded plastic. From a distance, you might think it was glass. But then again, you gotta be, I have to be really careful to get that. Here's another one I did. This one I was trying to be careful on, and unfortunately, I um, gave it a little bit too much UV and it turned yellow on me. Now, my experience with the transparent filament that turns yellow is it will, over time, turn back some of the yellowness, if not most all of it, will go away. So, I'm going to switch this light out and let's see if I can get... Let's First off, let's switch the light out and let's look at them in a... Um, and I might have to switch the overhead light off too. But this is, this is FDM. Let me zoom down and get a better look at this. So that's what the FDM one looks like. I hope that's reasonably well focused and obvious. Let's look at the original one. Here's the original one. Here's the FDM again. Here is the one off of the resin that I got kind of cloudy but didn't get yellow. And here's the one off of the... Um, F, or, but I'm saying this all wrong. Here's the resin one that I managed to keep mostly transparent but unfortunately got it yellowed. So um, honestly, I think any of them will work. I'm going to go with the FDM one just because I think it's a tougher, a much tougher filament. And I really don't think it's going to matter one way or the other. So, plus I tested it and it fits. Well, they all fit. So, I'm going to try and mock the Speedo up with the bulb in it and see if we can see what it looks like with it in there. Well, that was a lot of fun. Not. I was hoping to get the pop rivet because I wanted to pop rivet these in. I was hoping to get the pop rivet to go in from this side and expand against the sheet metal, but there just isn't enough room to get the head of the tool in there to do it. So I had to come in from the sheet metal side with the pop rivet, and I was afraid it would break the plastic. I tried putting a washer on top, hoping it would pull the washer down and break, and the washer just fell off, of course. But nonetheless, it spread out, broke, and didn't break the plastic or come loose, and uh, it's... It's in there pretty good. I'm actually shocked. So anyway, I'm going to turn the lights out, mock this thing up, and let's see how that works. I may have to turn all the lights out, which will be fun. Okay, I'm back. I think I've got it all held together. Let's, um, let's stick it in. Let's see if I can get it in the right one. Make sure we're kind of still all together correctly. We are. So here it is. Can you see that? Wow, that really lights that up super well, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm going to be honest with you. It never lit up all that well to begin with. So obviously there's going to be two more bulbs in it, but that does work. It just kind of, well, all it really does is it lights up all around the rim and then through the, the holes. I don't know if you can even see at the bottom where the, um, where the fuel gauge is on the right and where the odometer is. Since this does seem like it kind of sort of works at least as well as the original, which wasn't that good, let's put the other two in and let's see what it looks like with all three bulbs in it. Well, you know what? I really can't mock up all three bulbs in it because I don't have bulb holders. And I really don't want to solder wires to the... Um, to three different bulbs. I mean, I could, but I really don't want to. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it, and we're going to put it back in this way. I can see from sitting here looking at it that it's going to light up. With all three bulbs in it, it's probably going to light up better than the original did. So um, I think that's going to be it. I hope you guys thought this was as humorous as I did. Maybe you got something out of it. If you did, 
please like and subscribe and hell if you didn't please like and subscribe and hit notifications and when I get it all put together and back in the dash we'll have another look to see how well this works.